diving hopeful Kent Ferguson. He's the reigning world champion in men's springboard diving, but he just missed making both the 1984 and 1988 U.S. Olympic teams, finishing a heartbreaking third in the trials both times. But this year, he finally broke his Olympic trials hex, finishing second in Indianapolis to qualify for the U.S. team. He's now one of the favorites here in Barcelona for the Olympic gold. And Kent Ferguson arrived in Barcelona last week, and he's looking forward very much to marching in Saturday's opening ceremonies of this, his first Olympic Games, for which he's waited so long. Kent, good morning to <laughs> good you. Good morning. You really did have a heartbreaking experience in both 84 and 88. How does it feel now, finally making the Olympic team? Well, it's finally, it's great to get, as my coach says, a monkey off my back and really, really get here and enjoy the Olympic experience. It's just been incredible so far. What have you been doing in terms of enjoying the Olympic? Is it everything well, you thought it would be and more? <laughs> pretty much so. The, the venue's incredible. Um, the people here at the, at the village have been so nice to us. We've been out just kind of touring around the city even, and just, it's, it's been a wonderful experience thus so far. So you've been able to get a look at Barcelona a little bit. Yep. The, the venue is really breathtaking. I mean, yeah. have you ever seen anything like it? This is the first time I've seen a pool such as this one that's kind of etched in the side of a cliff and has the whole panoramic view of Barcelona. So not only do we get to train, but we get to see Barcelona for training. So it's really kind of a nice diversion for us who like that. Is it difficult to adjust to a new venue? Is it is a springboard, is a springboard, is a springboard? Or do you have to really get acclimated to your new surroundings? No, there's, there's a lot of variability. And with this pool, the way the sun comes up in the east and sets in the west and the orientation of the boards is a little different. So we have to uh, get used to where the sun is when we're spinning and we're uh, diving. And it, it's a little different. And the springboards are always different. So it was good for us to get here a week early. Uh, the Chinese team, who happens to be one of the strongest teams, just got in today. So they may have a little difficulty adapting. Why have the Chinese come out so strong in diving? What makes them so good at this sport? Well, I think in my view, um, it, it looks to me as if they mass produce their athletes. They have so many, so many divers. If one gets hurt, there's always another that's just as good, if not better, to replace them. So they, they've got the talent. They work so hard. I mean, they are, they really don't have a life outside of the sport of diving, which to me is not the way to do it. You know, you're, you're thrilled and everybody's thrilled for you that you finally made the team, but it looked a little dicey even in the trials, <laughs> yeah. didn't it? You weren't doing so well in the prim preliminaries, you pulled it out in the finals. Right. If you had thought you wouldn't make the team, what do you think you would have chosen for your final dive? Uh, well, I, I thought about it, and I, I was telling some reporters uh, before the uh, finals, I said, if I go into that last dive, and I'm in a solid third place, no chance of making that uh, Olympic team, cannonball. It, it's, it's best to be last than it is to be third again, because it isn't as painful. I bet. So. And a cannonball's a little better than a belly flop, I that's guess. That's true, that's true. <laughs> now, Greg Louganis is not on the Olympic team, obviously. He retired after 1988. Is it, does it feel good to be out of Greg Louganis' shadow? That must have been tough, wasn't it? Well, it was, it was actually, for me, it was good having Greg there because we trained and competed together for several years. And for me, it was great to go down to uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida and have the best coach in the world there and, and compete and train with the best diver in the world. So I had three years of um, good training with Greg. Now, since he's left the sport, it's been really nice for the athletes that have been in his shadow to kind of shine. And it's been our time to show that we are strong even without Greg there. A lot of people are saying the gold medal will be between you and Mark Lindsay. Do you think that'll be the case? Wow. <laughs> I haven't really <laughs> thought about it like that. I, I try not to focus on outcomes so much. I try to focus on having a good performance, enjoying the process of, of the competition. And I usually don't watch where I am in, in comparison to anybody else. So we'll just see where, where it ends up on the 29th. And you told me you just deal with the pressure by making it seem like any other competition with a lot more cameras on you. That's right. This is the same competition we've been in several, several times before. Um, same international divers I've seen for the last 10 years. Only difference is there's two or three or four times as many cameras surrounding us and uh, a lot of media questions. Before we go, I know you do some modeling to pay the bills while you dive. Is that something you might be interested in doing after you retire from, from diving? Uh, well, it, it may be. It's, it's right now it's just a sideline. I work with Zoli out of New York, and, and they've got me some good jobs. And that must be pretty cool. You're in GQ and Esquire. <laughs> it's, it's really nice. It's kind of a... Nest a, commercial. Right? It's a, it's a strange experience to kind of uh, open up a magazine and see your face there. But it's, it's been really fun. It's been a great distraction for me, so I wouldn't have to focus so intensely on diving. And... I have a life outside of that.
Well, it seems like you have your head together. Ken Ferguson, thanks so much for talking with us. Best of luck to you. Have, have a good time. Oh, well, thanks. I will. All right. That's it from Barcelona. Barcelona? Barcelona? Thank you, Brian. Barcelona? Barcelona? Did we well, get paella stuck in our teeth? Barcelona? Not, <laughs> Barcelona. It's all so confusing over here. Oh, yeah. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> We're going to come on. <laughs>